So handling arrays in React can be a little tricky when it comes to form fields. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. We're going to code a little example using just React and no third-party libraries. But we're going to do something similar to what the Redux form example has on field arrays. So what we're going to be building is the ability to store an array of data and have them be input fields, kind of like this. And you can see here is the state, right? That's the state of the form, and that's what we're going to be building. Now, the things that we're going to do are being able to edit and add new fields, and then also to remove them. And this is just good practice to get a gist of how you might do this with just React. And we're going to be using hooks. And then I'm going to do a follow up to this video on how you can use it with Formic and their field array. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I just have a blank screen right now. And uh, I just have Create React opened up. And I have a vanilla project here. All I have is this div. And I went ahead and I converted this, uh, the app in app.js uh, or tsx. And I converted this over to a function. That way I can use hooks. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an array that we can store in the state. So I'm going to say use state for this. And here I'm going to call this people. And then the second value is going to be, uh, looks, my, looks like my vim is lagging. There we go. And the second value is going to be set people. So what we're going to do is we're going to say people.map and we just want to display this array. So I'm going to set a default value up here like that. And I'm going to say a person has a first name, which is a string, and a last name, which is a string. So I just made a interface here for the type because I'm using TypeScript. Um, and then I just said this was going to be an array of people passing it into this use state. And this is a generic that I'm using there. All right, so we're going to map over the people here. I also am going to add an ID. And the reason why I'm going to add an ID is because when we're mapping over items like this, we're going to want to delete these items. We're going to edit these items. And when you're mapping through items in React, you need to pass a key. And you don't want to use the index for the key when you're doing those kind of operations because stuff can't get messed up. So that's why we are adding an ID so we can use that as the uh, the key. All right, so what I'm going to return is a div. And for now, I'm going to just display two input fields. First name. And I'm going to leave everything else blank on it for now. And last name. And again, we're going to use the ID that we get from the person uh, as the ID um, or for the key. All right, I'm going to save this. And of course, we don't have any people yet. So we're just going to see a uh, blank blankness over here. But if we were to say add a person in the initial value here, so an ID of five. First name, last name. We should at least see two input fields and they're empty. Now, the next thing that we can do is we can display the value of the current one by saying p.first name and p.last name. And we can see one and two. But now if we try typing, we're not going to get anything. And that's because we do not have uh, on change configured. So we can add that. So that's going to give us an event here. And we can say event dot uh, event dot current dot oops, sorry, not current dot target um, dot value. And then from that, this is going to be the current string that the user has typed. And then we just, all we want to do from here is we want to look up the item in the array that we're currently want to, or currently editing and set the value equal to this. So how do we do that? 
we're gonna say set people. And I'm gonna show two ways. This first way, I'm gonna show you um, the, I guess, without any libraries. So in this case, we are doing it just a, a mute, without mutating the array, and we're gonna create a new array with the new value. So to do stuff like that, what I like to do is I like to map over the array. So uh, set people, we can either uh, pass in a new value or we can pass in a function and return a new value. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna say uh, people, or I guess uh, current people is the best name. And I'm gonna say current people.map. And I'm gonna say if the ID is equal to the current person's ID, so p.id, then I know this is a new value. Otherwise, I'm going to just return the regular value. I'm gonna keep all the existing values and then I'm going to update the first name value to whatever e.target.value is. Also, it's good to note that uh, because I chose a function here, I'm going to have to create a new value here and set it in an array. Or we can call this first name. So I called this, or I don't mean uh, array, sorry. So we just need to put this value in a local variable because we are basically creating a closure right here. So to be able to do that and make sure the value is correct, we need to do that. All right, so I'm gonna save this. This probably looks like maybe total nonsense if you haven't seen this style before. So I'm gonna show you another way that is a little bit simpler. But what that will allow us to do is we can at least type into the first name and when the value will show up can't type into the second name quite yet. All right, so how can we make this a lot simpler? Um, this is where we can install a third party library. Um, so we're gonna add Emmer to do that. And this is just simplifies the updating of the values. So I guess I said we weren't gonna use any third party libraries. We're not gonna use any third party form libraries. So this is more of a utility. All right, so import from Emmer. And there is a function called produce. So what we can say is call produce and oops, pass in current people. And again, this is the current array of people. And then here we're gonna say the value and this allows us to mutate the value. So I can look up what the index is. So let's get that from the map up here. And we're gonna say dot first name is now equal to first name. So this is probably a lot easier to read. So what we're doing here is we are calling set people and we're basically returning a new array. And this new array has all the same values except at this current index, we are renaming or setting a new value for the first name. Um, and then we could make this generic into some kind of function if we wanted to, but I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this. And this is gonna be last name. So again, we can use the same on change logic up here, but I'm just using last name um, instead of first name. And that allows us to change the values up here. So that is kind of how you can edit stuff or change the values in an array. The gist of it is look up the value at an index, change the value, um, and then you can make that easy by using the produce function by Emmer. The next thing that I want to do is go over how you can add values to this array, um, say using uh, so just like a button that you click on or something. So let's add that. I'm gonna just add it at the top. I'm gonna say add new person. And we're just gonna say on click. And we're gonna say set people. So we're gonna take the current people 
we are going to copy that into a new array and then we're just going to add an item at the end so that item is a new person um, and here's where we can set the id first name and last name we're going to leave it blank now i want a unique id for each dude so what i'm going to do for that is uh, get another third party library which i'm going to get short id so this is a library that just generates a unique ID. You can use any other library that you like or create like your own function. And I'm just gonna install the types for it as well because I'm using TypeScript. All right, so we can import short ID and there is a, I believe it's called generate function that we can uh, grab from there and that's gonna create the ID for us. Um, and I'm just gonna call that right here. So, yep, generates, right? generate give that a save so this is just gonna have a unique ID and then an empty first name last name so now we can add people and we can update the values and each values updating individually works nicely um, and if we want to we can display just at the bottom here what the value of the state looks like so we're gonna say json.stringify people and we can see just a string representation of the state also pro tip with using uh, json stringify you can say null 2 and it just formats it a little bit nicer or what I mean I believe it usually does it doesn't look like it's doing it in this case I did save it right well just kidding on the pro tip did it not? Yep. Maybe it's because it's in an array. It doesn't like it. I just want to try getting the first value and see if it looks nice. No, it doesn't. Huh. Maybe I have to do like a P tag or something. All right. We'll just move on to the next thing. It just doesn't really matter that much. All right. So we have, we're able to add new values to our array. Looks kind of ugly quickly, but You'll notice each one has a unique ID to it. And then as we add the value here, you can see it updating down here. The last thing that I wanted to go over was uh, deleting an item from this uh, array of items. So I'm gonna add a new thing inside of our mapping. So I'm gonna add just a button that is an X. And then when we click on it, we're going to update the state. I'm gonna say set people and take the current people and then we're just going to filter through it. All right, so p.id, this is the current person that we get from mapping over the people. So I'm saying as long as the ID that we're currently iterating over is not equal to the item in the list or the person in the list, um, keep it. And so that's how filter works. If the condition is true, keeps it in the list. So basically one item in here is gonna be false and that's what's gonna be filtered. So if we take a look at this, um, oh, give it a save. All right, so now we see this X. Now we can happily add and delete items. And we can edit if we want to. And there we go. So we have successfully created a bunch of input fields and are able, able to edit, delete, and add new ones onto them. So this can feel like kind of a lot of boilerplate, especially if you're wanting to do a ton of forms. Um, so this is where using a form library like Formic can be very helpful and it can handle some of the boilerplate like this for us. And you can do even more advanced things very easily. For example, doing validation, whether the field has been touched and whatnot. And uh, that's what I'm gonna look at in the next video.